G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, it's Sunday morning here in Australia and the weekend retracement that I said usually comes, did come. We can see that there's a little bit of red going on here and look, Bitcoin went on a bit of a surge. It actually got up to nearly $41,000. So it was almost back at its all-time highs. It has pulled back just a slight little bit. But look, a little bit of a pullback over a weekend is not so bad, and especially considering Bitcoin is almost back up at its old all-time high that we sort of have been moving downwards for around about sort of a month or so, and now it's slowly starting to move back up. So things are looking good. That's what we call a healthy correction, and it was done in a healthy manner. It didn't just pump up and dump straight down. It just sort of slowly eased off over a couple of, you know, a period of around about sort of three weeks. So this is what we want, and this is really going to help the market build, you know, back up because it pulled back for a while, slowly started to make its way back up. So it was showing that it was real growth. People were get getting back in. It wasn't just kind of pump and dump stuff. And we have seen some pump and dump stuff uh, over the last little while. So let's have a look. All right. Again, market cap, $1.2 trillion now. Looks like we're pretty healthy staying above a trillion. But, you know, we could have some sort of flash crashes, as they say. And yeah, we'll just wait and see, but it looks great at the moment. BTC dominance rose just a slight bit. This was 59 the other day. So back up above 60%. Uh, ETH, again, you know, its dominance is continuing to rise and you can see that in the gas prices. Now the gas prices have come down a little bit. They're at 200, but 100 is still way too much. It is absolutely killing, you know, the average investor. We just can't use Ethereum. It is really disappointing. But anyway, let's move on. What's really pumped in the last 24 hours? Have we had any really big movers? We have Dogecoin, there we go. It's making its way back up again. Uh, it's not at its highest. This was at around about six cents, but it is getting pretty close to uh, its all-time high. Cardano has made some really good moves. So hopefully Cardano is gonna have a really good month. I mean, again, 62 cents, that's not too bad. But we need to remember it's old, old all-time high was a dollar eighteen. So let's just round it up and say a dollar twenty. You can still double your well again, not financial advice, just my personal opinion. You could double your money if Cardano was just to get back to its old all-time high. If it then goes into price discovery, well, who knows what it could get to? But very nice for Cardano. So Quantum, uh, Decred, IOST. So these are some pretty good gains. Nothing too crazy except for sort of Dogecoin, and that's not even crazy for 24 hours, but just some nice gains. All right, what about losses though? Because there were definitely some coins that took some losses over the last 24 hours. Yep, Compound, 13%, uh, and again, still up 60% over seven days. Reserve rights, Kyber Network, that's disappointing. Uh, that it you know sort of pumped up so much and had that loss, but anyway, it is what it is. It's still up forty percent over seven days. Phantom, Voyager, Loopring, Thorchain, uh, Synthetics Network. So again, none of these pullbacks are kind of that bad though. Really, like they are double digit, but they're very low double digit gains. And if you go then go next to them, so like Synthetics Network, it's down ten percent but it's still up 22% over the seven days. So yeah, nothing too bad going on there in the market really. No major price hikes and no major price sort of lows. But let's have a look at Bitcoin on the chart. So we can see it did kind of flash right up there. It was around 41, yeah, 41,000. So very close to its old all time high. And then it has retraced a little bit. Oh, and there we can see we've got a red candle coming in. Um, what is the time though here in the market? I can't see, oh there it is. All right, so it's just gone after midnight, so that's why we have flashed into this new candle. All right, so that candle is now setting in, starting off red and seems to be growing at the moment. So again, there is a bit of a pullback, but we'll have to wait and see. I don't expect this to dump too much, but it is possible this rolls over and we might even come back down and retest this line at some stage. But we'll just have to wait and see. Again, it is Sunday. Once Monday comes around uh, and the markets start up, it's generally been pretty sort of bullish news. All right, let's move on. Now, this is really disappointing. So DMG price crashes 90% as DM, DMM protocol ceases operations. Now, this is part of the problem with new projects. They don't have the history behind them to show that they're going to be here for a long time. And this has probably hurt a few people. 
So the government's token of DeFi money market, DMG, has tanked by as much as 90% after the protocol announced an immediate cease of operations. So again, that kind of hurts. I mean, it's decentralized, allegedly. So it can't really just simply disappear, but 90% retracement very quick, and that's going to hurt people. In an unfortunate turn of events for supporters of the DeFi Money Market Foundation, the DMM token, plummeted in value as the team behind it revealed they cease all operations due to regulatory concerns. All right, that's a bit of a worry. I'm not sure uh, what is behind that. The DeFi Money Market used to be uh, used to be a loans platform and it received some serious attention within the cryptocurrency community. One of the reasons it was a hot DeFi project backed by some serious names, including Draper Goran Holm, a partnership between Tim Draper, Alan Goran and Joseph Holm, focused on investing in blockchain solutions. So again, these are the VCs that got into it. Uh, no doubt they've probably also got their money back quite quickly. Uh, I'm not saying they just did a pump and dump, but they would have likely already made their money back from the token, which started a little while ago. And so whatever happens to it from now, they're probably not too worried. Don't get me wrong. I'm sure they've got their moon bags sitting there that, uh, yeah, are now not going to moon or unlikely to moon. Unfortunately, supporters of the project have received the bad news today as the team behind DMM announced an immediate hold of operations. As a result of regularly, regulatory inquiries, DMM is shutting down. Effective immediately, M-Token minting is no longer available. M-Token redemption will remain available indefinitely through the interest rate of on M-Tokens will drop to 0% on or about February 10th, 21. Capital and interest are currently available to f uh, fund redemption of all outstanding M-Tokens plus a uh, accrued interest uh, now that's what read on the official website so 90 percent it basically went from 50 cents down to five cents very very quickly and again all those people who got into it late they really are quite wrecked at the moment so i don't like to be the bearer of bad news but these new protocols and most protocols are pretty new at the moment especially uh, in the DeFi space there's no guarantees they're going to last they just don't have that history behind them to make you feel safe that they've been been here for a long time and again i'm not trying to pump the projects that i like but synthetics network been around since 2018 they started in the bear market uh Arve, it used to be eth lend again it's been around since i uh, since i think 2017 chain links been around since i think 2017 these are the projects that i like and they've been around long enough that it looks like they're going to be here to stay but there's no guarantees but these are the issues that we have to worry about when we're investing you know if you can get some profit you know in these newer projects at least get your capital back do that because if they're not going to stick around then yeah, you can lose a bit that's unfortunate all right tether freezes freezes 1.7 million in usdt that was stolen in the yearn fine exploit so there was an exploit that was used uh in the y1 die vault i think a number of uh million dollars were kind of taken out of it in that exploit and tether has frozen this 1.7 million dollars in usdt now there's good and bad to this the good is that tether have been able to do this and then the bad is that tether has been able to do this as well so it depends on how you look at it me you know i don't mind it i think this is good but you know people are calling for full decentralization if there's full decentralization tether wouldn't be able to do this because tether is somewhat central well not somewhat it is centralized they've been able to freeze uh this money and make sure that the person who has found that exploit doesn't get away with as much money uh me personally i don't mind that i do want us to have systems in place that we can do those things but as long as this is the only time that it ever gets used and it is just to simply you know, get on top of bad players and all the rest of it, as long as they don't start coming up with other reasons why they had to do it uh, that, again, go against uh, the people who are using the system. Now also, Bitfinex uh, has made a final loan repayment of 550 million back to Tether. And this was done in cash, it wasn't done uh, in any other way. So. You know, there's been a lot of issues around Tether and whether they're really backed by money. And also Bitfinex has had uh, issues and it seems that Bitfinex have now paid back a loan. Uh, and it does go down to say that uh, they paid it off. Uh, yeah, said the loan was paid earlier than scheduled, adding that the line of credit was now closed. So very, very interesting. You know, a, a lot of 
FUD around Tether. And, you know, I don't know enough about Tether to know whether they really are, you know, completely backed. I know they're not backed dollar for dollar because they say that they also are backed by some of their crypto assets. But this is, you know, good news for Tether. At least they've got $550 million in cash to back up what they've got out there. But I think they've got billions and billions of dollars worth of stable coins. So, yeah, we'll wait and see. All right, Pancake Swap gained 444% as its daily DEX volume surpasses 90 million. So, this is quite a pump and it's a it's a Binance chain platform. Uh, and it's quite popular at the moment and a, a lot of it is to do with the fact that they don't have the gas fee problems that uh, Ethereum has and things like Uniswap. So again, you know, we go over here. If you're trying to use Uniswap, you're going to pay 105 in gas fees at the moment. But there is something that has people concerned with. So while cake has been rising in value, excuse me, that's the coin, an area of concern is its potentially infinite supply. 25 cake are issued per block and redistributed to liquidity protocols, uh, sorry, liquidity pools and the lottery for syrup holders. On the other hand, an, Im an embedded, that doesn't make any sense. On the other hand, an embedded during mechanism includes a 9.1% 9, 9 of all the farm cake tokens, 10% of the lottery tokens and 100% of the fees raised in its initial farm offerings. Uh, I'm not really sure what that means, but basically it's an infinite token. So Ethereum is also the same though. There is no max cap supply of Ethereum and it looks like they're introducing burn mechanisms similar to Ethereum uh, E1559 protocol and things like that. So very, very interesting. And anyone who got into Cake, I think it started about five months ago, seems they're doing quite well now. Uh, and that's really good. And look, I expect Binance to do extremely well. And again, there's people who have issues with centralized uh, exchanges and things like that, but we do need some centralization and we do need ways of making sure that we have ways in place, again, you know, especially like that Tether one, to make sure we can sort of stop the bad eggs from getting away with it. So good and bad side towards centralized and likewise, there's good and bad side towards decentralized. If it's completely decentralized and there's no way way of you know going after people that exploit you know platforms and things like that well then we'd never be able to sort of catch those guys All right growing list of one billion dollar unicorns uh suggests the best is still yet to come so there's more than 53 blockchain projects have emerged as multi-billion dollar market uh, cap crypto unicorns a signal that the 2021 20, uh, bull market is just getting started so they go on to mention uh, projects like cardano uniswap you know there's blue chip DeFi projects uh, maker you know some of the old legacy ones like litecoin monero zcash so there is a ton of projects out there that are what they call unicorns and likely they have much more upside still yet to come so anyone who's thinking that you know oh this is kind of the peak bitcoin's going to probably struggle and never get over fifty thousand dollars and the end of the bull market is near no we're still you know i wouldn't say very early in it but we're still early in it we've still likely got at least another kind of you know six is six ish months before the peak cycle and again then it may stretch out even longer i did bring that story yesterday where i said they're expecting not expecting but they're saying it could run for another 22 months on top of now so i mean that's you know nearly two years that the bull run could continue for i'm not sure it can last that long we'll just have to wait and see what happens all right bill miller's trust so to invest up to 300 million in grayscale bitcoin trusts so again we're still early people are just getting in now it's and it's not going to happen overnight it's not like tomorrow all the institutions are suddenly going to be in they've got to get regulatory uh clarity uh you know file with the sec and form that they're doing it 
So I'd say we're still very early and this is likely going to continue for quite some time. So Bill Miller's Investment Trust is getting into Bitcoin, adding a filing submitted to the US Securities and Exchange Commission, again, the SEC, I just spoke about that, by the Miller Opportunity Trust, the trust founded by American investor and fund manager Bill Miller, may seek investment exposure to Bitcoin indirectly by investing in the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust. I'd say they 100% will. And look, they're going to invest in other things, you know, like mining Bitcoin directly and all sorts of stuff, getting into... Uh, what is it, uh, ETFs and things like that when they come out. So the trust declared that it will stop when it has channeled up to 15% of its assets into Grayscale's Bitcoin trust. To put that into perspective, the trust holds $2.25 billion in assets under management. That means that it plans to indirectly channel over $300 million into Bitcoin through Grayscale's Bitcoin trusts. The news comes a fortnight after Miller penned an income strategy letter calling Bitcoin an emerging and under-owned technology in an enormous addressable market. With a brilliant, uh, with a brilliant, logically consistent protocol with a distributed governance. So again, there's more big money piling in. These pullbacks that we get uh, and kind of lay periods when not too much is happening in Bitcoin particularly that doesn't last forever. It is just part of the bull run cycle and will continue. Now, as we spoke about it here, Bitcoin, it was back above 40K as institutions led the way. The price of Bitcoin rose above 40,000 on Saturday as the leading cryptocurrency has nearly regained all of its losses suffered since reaching an all-time high in early January. Bitcoin hit 40,500 before falling back to 40,200 and was up 4.1% in 24 hours. Helping to drive the latest run is fresh interest on the part of institutional money, such as Ray Dalio's Bridgewater Associates, which manages $150 billion in investors' money, and the Miller Opportunity Trust that we were just spoke, speaking about. It may also be getting a boost from MicroStrategy's World.Now BTC theme conference that happened this week. I'd likely say that has played a part. You know, institutions, there was 1,400 people that were part of this conference have come around to see what would happen uh, if they got into, uh, sorry, not see what would happen, see how they could get invested in Bitcoin without severely spiking the price. Now, it is going to spike the, spike the price regardless. You can't have all of those getting in and nothing happen to the price, but without sending it sort of sky high. But again, if, you know, let's say there was two to three people from each uh, business there, 1,400, so divide that by two or uh, three, so let's say, let's just divide by two, there was 700 likely businesses there that now are considering at least, if not going to get into Bitcoin, and they're trying to find the best way to do it. Now, Bridgewater's piece out last, uh, Bridgewater's piece that they put out last week had a sensitive uh, sensitivity analysis which showed their estimates of BTC price should private holders of gold switched to Bitcoin states a weekly investor note from Friday a note Friday from quantitative trade firm QC Capital. The forecast that should be fit that sorry, they forecasted that should fifty percent of capital in gold move into BTC, that was would result in the price of eighty five thousand dollars per uh, Bitcoin. So very, very interesting. I have no doubt Bitcoin is going to get to eighty five thousand uh, in sometime this year. Excuse me, huh? I can't see that not happening. But, look, there's always possibilities. Who knows? All right, I'd love to know your thoughts down below. Do you see Bitcoin getting to 85000 this this year? Or you're a bit more bearish. Do you think that the peak is going to be, you know, maybe 50000 Or do you think we've found the peak already? Love to know your thoughts. I definitely think we get to 85000 this year. And I think it's highly likely, highly likely we get to a hundred plus thousand dollars this year in bitcoin i've been wrong before i could be wrong uh, uh and i will be wrong again in the future whether i'm wrong about this call or not i don't know but i i would say a hundred thousand would likely be the minimum and will probably be there somewhere around about sort of july i'd be surprised if we weren't all right do me a favor go down below click that like button click that subscribe button click the bell all bell icon when you do so it gives you notifications that I've put out new stuff. All right, stay safe, be kind to one another. Hopefully you're all on that gain train and I'll see you next time.